I'm Greg with Greg James Designs and we're here today and we want to talk about some things that would help you. We're, we're in our Barndell Basics series and uh, what are we going to cover today? So let's talk about HOA, which is Homeowners Association. Yeah, very good. So many people either live in a HOA, Homeowners Association, or they uh, are looking at maybe a lot. Okay, These are platted, in other words, they're planned developments. And when they develop these properties, they put covenants in place, and the covenants are really just guidelines for building. Okay. okay. We have a lot of clients that have had to deal with HOAs. Uh, they're either purchasing a property or in process of purchasing a property in an HOA, and then they come to us for design, and they say, hey, can I build this there? And I'll, a lot of times I tell them, send me your covenants. Mm. And I tell you, a lot of HOAs have different restrictions. Uh, some may say no metal buildings, no shop buildings uh, on the outbuildings, uh, or you could build a house, but it's got a. There's all these different requirements, and it depends on the philosophy of the HOA and where it is. If it's more of a ranch and farming community, they say yes, we 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 want to make provision for somebody to maybe have one horse, okay, or one large farm animal and uh, maybe one outbuilding, you know, so there's, there's maybe a provision for a shop. Mm -hmm. You know, you can build a shop building. So and it's just different depending on what area yeah, you're yeah, in. Yeah, it just really. depends. But we have run into situations to where the HOA did not, would not allow metal siding on the house. They thought, well, we want to build a barnuminium. Well, not to fear, you can do that, okay? All you have to do is you can do wood siding or brick or stone instead of the metal siding so you can still put up a metal building in many situations unless they absolutely prohibit that in in the language of the covenants and then i've seen hoas to where there has to be a percentage of rock or stone on the house yeah. and there's no mention of metal okay so the metal was not prohibited but it had to be 40% brick or 40% stone, you know, to, to keep it consistent with all the homes in the neighborhood. And so that's the thing is just they're designed to keep the property values up so nobody's parking a trailer house in there or building some crazy structure that is completely different from everything in the neighborhood. So that's, yeah. that's basically it. So how does someone find those covenants in their HOA? That's a good question. Usually there's a head of the HOA. You'd have to ask around, see who's in charge of the HOA. Um, usually that's, once you talk to that person, you can get a copy of the covenants. And then a lot of times if you're dealing with a realtor, uh, they should have a copy of the covenants already. It's just part of this, you know, selling that lot. And so, or you may be buying a house in the HOA and then you want to build a, you know, an uh, another structure on there and you have to see if that's allowed so yeah so now we're going to talk about zoning okay. so first of all everyone may not know this what is zoning basically property all property has a designation within a city okay so it's zoned so you have commercial zoning you have residential zoning you have multifamily residential zoning you have industrial zoning and so there's all these different types of zoning and that basically what that does is they say in this particular area, the zoning is R1, which in most situations R1 would be residential one or single family homes. You cannot build multiple structures on the property to live in. Okay. Uh, now, in in certain parts of the country, they have what's called an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit. So a lot of people like to build small structures on the property to Airbnb them. So there may be a single family zoning, but then there may be an ordinance in there for or a, you know, provision for uh, accessory dwelling units, ADUs. Now many times the thing is you can build, they have to be within a certain square footage. Uh, and a lot of them you can't cook in them. So you can have a little kitchen in there, but you can't have a stove. I don't know, it's just weird little thing like that. So zoning is important. You need to figure out what zoning you're in. You may already know if you're out in the country, you're probably zoned agricultural, which you can build pretty much anything. Okay, and so um, you can build, you know, ten houses if you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
And so uh, that's kind of what zoning is. It's just a, it's a, it's a guideline in which a city determines for an area what can be built, what cannot be built. It's a way of controlling um, so things don't get out of hand. So, like for instance, you don't have you know a residential area, then you know one block over they don't want to put a factory in. You know, right. that sort of thing. So that's that's why they have zoning laws. Okay. Yeah. So um, are there any issues that someone might have in zoning? Absolutely. Um, had an issue lately with a client that wanted to build a, uh, a whole other dwelling structure on their property. But when they went to their county, they found out, hey, they're zoned R1. Once again, it cannot have but one living structure on that property so they had to go a different route and convert that structure to just a shop or you know a building so yeah so that zoning can be a big deal there can be restrictions awesome so how would someone find out that information for their zone or yeah. what zone they're in so if you contact your basically your building department, they should be able to tell you if you give them the address and the location. And uh, sometimes they require the legal address, which is on your title work or on your survey. So, yeah. Okay. So zoning can be a deal breaker. Um, so just know what zoning you're in before you get started. This is all kind of part of the very beginning stages of your planning process. So yeah. hopefully this is helpful for you. So be sure to subscribe and. Yeah, you know, leave comments if there's something that you're not sure about or have questions about in these certain areas and the permits or zonings or HOAs. We'll do our best to answer those for you. So, thank you.